Okay guys, so you had a sneak peek of what the Beaver Builder does. Let's go back inside the Beaver Builder so I can show you a little bit more about the interface and most importantly, the global settings again. So let's click here where it says Page Builder and it quickly opened up into the actual page builder. You may not notice that much of a difference other than there's a toolbar at the top and if you click here on this drop down or toggle menu, you will see that we have a list of options here. And if you click on this plus sign on the right hand side, it will fling out, I say fling because I'm Jamaican, but uh, they will fling out this uh, sidebar which has all our modules in, but I'm gonna show you a bit later what those modules are. So in this tutorial, what I do wanna talk about is this drop down uh, area here. We're not gonna talk about the templates. We're not gonna talk about duplicating layouts. We'll have more on that a bit later. But what we will talk about is here where it says global settings. Again, this is another area which people tend to miss, but it's another thing which is super important to make sure that you do before you start your project. So let's click on global settings. And here you will have another drop down tab so you can click on CSS and you can click on JavaScript. Now, because it says global, basically anything that says global means it's gonna be used throughout the whole entire site. So any CSS I put here is gonna be used throughout the whole site and any CSS uh, JavaScript that I put here is gonna be used throughout the whole site. It's the same as in the customizer section, which we did uh, um, in the last tutorial was it the last one or the one before that the one before that in that tutorial we talked about css and javascript and stuff like that um again you can put stuff there if you want to but there's multiple places where you can put css i would say that for you it's probably better if you just think of one place where you want to put your css and leave it there like don't put them in multiple places otherwise it's just going to give you a headache uh, further on down the line so the reason why I think that this uh, box is quite important, again, let me try and open this up so you could see um, what I'm doing. But this box is important because here it sets the default. Now you don't have to change these, you can leave them as you want. But um, I personally prefer the width of my website to be 1200 pixels. And I also prefer the default row width to be full width. I'll explain a little bit more about what that is, but that's basically my settings. That's how I like things to be done. You can also change responsive settings here. So if I don't want it to break at uh, 992 pixels, I can change uh, what pixel I want it to be. Um, and yeah, so basically this is just like the default settings. And I guess the more you use it, the more you will realize um, what is your actual default, like what is it that you feel comfortable using. Once you've set your, def your default, you just have to press save. And what you will notice, it was pretty quick, but basically my content area um, went out 1,200 pixels. The only thing that didn't go out 1,200 pixels was my header up here, but that's because in the customizer section, I didn't set it there either. So I'm gonna press done here and I'm gonna publish that. And I'm gonna click here where it says customize. And in the general tab under layout, I'm gonna change this to 1,000 200 and now the header should be in line with the rest of the text so let's press save and that's done as you can see where this row begins that's where the text begins and the rows all have like 20 pixel padding they've all got padding and margin in it that's the reason why this text is slightly uh, indented but that's round about how 1200 pixels would look minus the um, indents so that is basically it for this part of the tutorial in the next part of the tutorial we will be talking more about how you use beaver builder in your projects